action, then we can just. There we go. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming to this wellness breakout session. I'm Crystal Halk from the Central Office Wellness Committee. And today we get to hear from Monica Wales with Coaching Freedom, who will be walking us through the baby steps to improve our personal finances and budget. This session is being recorded and will be placed on the 2022 Wellness Fair page to be watched throughout the fair and beyond. And I'll now turn it over to Monica. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for the introduction, Crystal. And thank you for all that you do for our country. Thank you to all of you who are here today. Um, truly have a special place in my heart for y'all. So thank you. Um, I just want to share a very brief story about my life. Uh, I spent 16 years in healthcare and uh, my husband and I, before we got married, were in a financial mess. Um, and maybe none of you can relate to that, but maybe you know somebody who <laughs> has been through a financial mess. And when I say mess, I mean like we were to the point where we were taking cash advances from credit cards to make payments on other credit cards. It was really, really bad. Um, and so I've said enough is enough. We got we to gotta do something to clean this up. And so uh, we, I read the Total Money Makeover book by Dave Ramsey, um, changed our lives quite literally. Um, and it allowed me to leave this 16 year career in healthcare and become a financial coach so that I can help other people live the freedom that y'all have made for us. So thank you. Um, so with that, I will just start in with the baby steps. Is that okay? Everybody, all right. And if you're comfortable turning your cameras on, that'd be awesome. If not, I totally understand. We're probably all zoomed out by now. Um, but anyway, baby step number one is to start with an emergency fund, $1,000. Does anybody have an idea of like, what should the $1,000 be in your checking account or in your savings account? Anybody have any ideas? Emergency savings. Savings? I like it. It's a good idea. Yeah. Keep it separate, right? So it's not so tempting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a problem. Okay. I'm a spender. <laughs> all right. So baby step number two is to pay off all non-mortgage debt. So can you either pop into the chat and tell me some things that would qualify as a non-mortgage debt or speak up, open your mics. Vehicle, awesome. Credit cards, yes. Student loans, ah, student loans. All non mortgage debt, yep. Yep, baby step number two. Yeah, it's a thing. That seems like a big baby step. That's like, like I think about like student loans and the car, like I know. it's not a baby step. Like my Macy's card is a baby step. <laughs> So I, I'm so glad that you said that because it's a baby step within the baby steps, right? So it's number two and we use uh, the debt snowball to pay off our debts, starting with the lowest balance, not the lowest interest, the lowest balance first, so that you can gain momentum and see wins right away. Um, trust me, this works. I just, it just does. But yes, baby step two can be an overwhelming baby step. And it can take 18 to 24 months to move through this baby step, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, good call outs. All right, anything else for uh, non student or non student loans, non mortgage debt? Anything else you can think of? Okay. Any personal loans, medical bills? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Medical bills are a big deal. Okay. All right, so baby step three. Anybody know what baby step three is? Jen, you can't answer. <laughs> so baby step three is to fully fund your emergency fund. So we started with a baby emergency fund of $1,000. And in this step, we are going to fund three to six months of our expenses, not our income, but our expenses. So that might look different for everybody, what your level of comfort is. My husband and I, we, we went four and a half months because we couldn't make a decision on three months or six months. So we were right in the middle. <laughs> so 
So one thing I want to stop and say right now is that baby steps one through three are done in order and on purpose. So you're not going to work on your emergency fund while you're paying off your debt. You're going to pay off all your debt as quickly as possible, right? And you've got that thousand dollars in your emergency fund to, you know, keep keep uh, Murphy at bay when he comes to knock on your door and things go wrong or a refrigerator needs replaced, you know, things happen, life happens. Any questions about baby steps one through three? I know I'm kind of going fast here. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat too. I'm monitoring that as we go. Okay, so baby step number four. Oh, let me back up a minute. If you're contributing to retirement, and this may be a little bit different for y'all because I, there's probably, some, are there some mandatory retirement things? So if you have retirement uh, contributions that are coming out of your paycheck, if you have capacity or ability to stop those momentarily or pause them until you get out of debt, we recommend that. If that's not an option, then that's not an option. So, but we do recommend using those funds to pay off the debt as quickly as possible. So baby step number four, spoiler alert, like, okay, now we can start putting money into our retirement funds, 15% into our retirement. And I think you all are probably much better about saving for retirement than many, many of us. <laughs> so, that's, that's awesome. So baby steps four through seven can actually be done all together um, at the same time. So you don't have to go in order like baby steps one through three. Does anybody have a guess as to what baby step number five is? This is a good one. This is a good one. Does anybody have children? Anybody? Couple? Okay. So baby step five is saving for children's college. Yeah. So we can save for retirement. We can save for children's college. Um, maybe we're saving for a mortgage also. Maybe we're saving to buy a home also. That, that can be in baby step two or three, depending on where you're at. Um, the baby step six, total spoiler alert. Baby step six is to pay off your home early. Now, Grace, I'm just gonna call on you because you were so great to participate early on. I really appreciate that so much. And uh, you said baby step two. Coach. <laughs> this is a reward. This is not, this is, this is okay. a reward. You're gonna pay off my, my mortgage early. I am not personally, but I just wanna call back to your comment about how baby step two was so huge. It seems so huge. And for a lot of people paying off a mortgage seems almost impossible. Um, my husband and I, <laughs> when we got to this point, we had um, a chain link. Do you remember the, the garlands, the paper chain links that you made in school? Maybe I'm dating myself here, but we had one and each link represented a thousand dollars of debt. And we wrapped it around our living room ceiling. So we saw it every single day. And every time we paid off debt, we cut off a part of the chain. It was super symbolic and a great reminder of why we are doing what we're doing. We were not eating beans and rice. We were not gazelle intense, but you know, we definitely didn't travel as much to pay off our debt to get to where we were, where we are. Okay, baby step seven, my favorite step ever. Any guesses? Okay, Jen, you can answer this one. Oh, I don't know what that means. Invest in yourself. I love that. It's code for house. Code for house. Yeah. So baby step six is pay off your house. And baby step seven is to build wealth and give. And I'm like, this is this is my happy place when my clients get to this place because they can come from this place of abundance and they're so generous, um, generous with their time, generous with their money um, from buying 
coffee for somebody in the drive-thru to taking family members on a vacation. Um, it's truly remarkable. So those are the seven baby steps. What questions do you have so far? Now you said steps four through seven could be done all together. So while you're paying off your house, like go ahead and, and do good things for other people. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Like buy the coffee for the person behind you. Absolutely. Yeah. So your ability to be generous might be different if you're not 100%, like if you haven't paid off your home early, then your capacity to be generous might be different than somebody who's already paid off their house, right? Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with being generous in the meantime. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Thank you. I don't think it's a question, but it's more of a like a thought, yeah. That I think interesting, just the thought uh, as to what you were talking about. But I like the uh, not just the term, the debt snowball, obviously, because it's really super catchy. But what was surprising was uh, like the I feel like the logical person in, in me would look at the debt that I had and say, this one has the highest interest rate, so I would try to tackle that first. Mm -hmm. Saying to uh, the best way to go about doing it is tackle the one that has the lowest right principal. Lois and to pay balance. Yep. Can you, yeah. So can, can you explain that a little bit? I have some dissonance there. Yeah, no, totally. I appreciate that. Thanks for thanks for asking. Um, this is a conversation that I have with clients all the time. Um, the bottom line is there's been a whole bunch of studies <laughs> that have been done on what the best way is to pay off your debt. And, and the bottom line is there's really mathematically, there's not a huge difference. In the averages that happen out of those studies say that there really isn't a big difference. The difference is the psychology behind making progress one small debt at a time. And it may be 500, it may be $1,000, you know, but, but then whatever you were paying, that minimum payment that you were applying for that first debt, then it gets applied to the second debt. And so it just really, it's called a snowball for a reason because it's building this momentum. You're building uh, more momentum. I can't even think of another word. Just it keeps going and it goes faster and it gets bigger faster. And then you tackle the debt faster. It's, it's not really, I mean, to, to copy my, my good friend, Dave Ramsey, like it's not a money problem. It's not a math problem. It's a behavior problem. It's a behavior challenge right? What, how did the debt get there in the first place? What are we going to do about that? Great question. Anybody else have any questions? Let's see, let's pop into the chat here. So not supposed to, let's see. Okay, Grace, come on. That was a little sassy. It's okay. Say, tell me, just talk to me. It's the end of the day. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Are you talking about shifting the debt? Yeah, like, okay, I paid off my, my $500 Macy's card, so I'm going to take that money and go over there. But now I'm going to start charging that Macy's card again. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, yeah. I, I, well, we'll be honest with you. I have a client right now. Um, so I'm in Spokane, Washington, and I have a client right now who um, the, his wife is really struggling with not using the credit cards. And they're making progress and paying off the debt but it's been a very difficult conversation for me to have with them. Like this, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results, right? Which is what you do when you use credit cards. So yeah, thank you for that question. I think one of the biggest things that I just want people to, to know is that I'm a financial coach and so I do not sell investments. Um, what I do is I sit down with people and we talk about where they're at and where they want to be, what dreams they have, what priorities they have, and how, and how a lot of times we're talking about how to prioritize those things and how to set boundaries around their spending, saving, and giving so that they can reach those goals and priorities. That is a lot of what I do as, as a financial coach. And it's all within the 
parameters and recommendations that I shared with you today at the baby steps, because my husband and I have walked through those baby steps. I know they work and they're not new. They've been around for like 30 years, um, you know, so <laughs> it's, it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. Again, the book is total money makeover. I don't get a commission on that. It's just a book that changes your life, whatever, Dave Ramsey. Um, and I'm happy to meet with any of you outside of this call if you're interested in just talking about what it would look like to work with a financial coach. Um, if you're interested in seeing some serious progress in your uh, money goals, I'm your lady. So thank you so much for this time. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Monica. I just I appreciate the enthusiasm and the passion and energy that you brought to this because oftentimes you think of, you know, like a financial topic and you're like, oh, okay, this could go. One of <laughs> you brought the energy. <laughs> the Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I love so how you much. focused on the behaviors, um, behaviors that lead to a lot of challenges that financial challenges we experience as well. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So, oh, the media recording still going. Okay. So, I, I do because I emergency management also want to appreciate how you brought in how important it is to be financially prepared because I feel like it's often overlooked in emergency management preparedness realm as well as I'm sure for wellness personal mm -hmm. well as well so it's good to talk about that mm -hmm. because just in terms of looking at emergency preparedness although it wouldn't be nice you can't pay for expenses with cans of baked beans and MREs that you put in your disaster kit, right? You got to have it. So you to make sure you can weather the storm and whatever else life has that's going to be thrown at you. Yeah. So if you're recording the session, please send the link to the video to grace, okay. uh, wellness at dva.wa.gov email link if you can. Okay. Appreciate the time and again, the enthusiasm and experience and knowledge that you brought and shared with us here. You, the uh, WDBA and other state employees who decided to join us. Thank you for joining us and taking baby steps towards improving your wellness, your financial wellness. We hope to see you at the upcoming breakout sessions. I think there's two more, right, Grace? The next breakout session is using a wellness wheel for assessing personal well being, which is at 320 in two minutes. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you Monica. so much. Have a great day, everybody. You too. And thank you.